So we have our second panel now um, on apostasy, free expression and hate speech. The panel will be chaired by Terry Sanderson, a leading UK secularist and gay rights activist, author and journalist. He became president of the National Secular Society in 2006 and is a long-standing col col columnist for Gay Times. My fellow panelists approach. So um, I'm a little bit sort of stuck because I've got the end of conference, uh, falling to the end of conference trap in the sense that everything that I was going to say in my prepared notes has already been said. <laughs> and. Um, so I'm struggling a little bit, but I want, if I can, to try to inject just a little bit of optimism. I know we've heard some terrible stories today. We've, we've heard horrible tales of repression and, and persecution, and no doubt we're going to hear more. But maybe we can uh, look a little bit at what uh, happened in Europe when we were under a similar kind of religious hegemony and maybe take a few lessons from that. Last week I read an article in the Daily Telegraph by a man who said that, uh, saying that ISIS was something from the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages was, was idiotic because it was never like this in the Dark Ages. I don't agree with him. If you were in Europe in the Dark Ages, it was very similar to what it's like in the Middle East today. There were beheadings, there were burnings, there were... Um, apostates and heretics and blasphemers who were punished by the death penalty. So um, it was very similar and it was only through maybe two or three centuries of resistance and dissent that we managed to get the bleeding church off our backs. We, it took revolutions, several very bloody wars and um, you know there we are, we're free of it now. In Europe the, the Christian church is for all intents and purposes, finished. Um, and I think that maybe, just maybe, we can take some hope from that story about what might happen with ISIS and the other fanatics. Um, what happened in Europe happened because of apostates, because of blasphemers, because of dissenters, because of people who were prepared to stand up and say, no, not in my name. And uh, we've got some more here today, more apostates. And apostates to religion are very dangerous people. Um, apostates are the ones who give hope to the others who are under the thumb. And I think the reason that apostates are, are, are punished so violently is because they give a message to other people uh, to say, you could be an apostate too. And so one dead apostate is worth a thousand potential apostates who are cowed into silence by that murder. So apostates are very important and so are dissenters of every kind. And we must encourage it. I wonder, you know, we, we get this impression from the media that, that in, in the Middle East there's a uniform kind of piety and everybody is you know, a fanatical Muslim. Um, and we see the, the rioting crowds and the, the finger-wagging mullahs uh, on the television. But what we don't see is the people in, sitting in their houses feeling a bit scared, but also doubting what they're being told. We need to make it easier for them to, to say, actually, I don't agree with this. Apostates do that in their little way. Unfortunately, as European history shows, apostates often are killed. Um, but in European history, other apostates followed them, and then others followed them. And eventually, um, there were enough apostates to overwhelm the, the powers that were repressing them. Uh, anyway, I feel very um, privileged to be amongst this, this uh, gathering today, and, and particularly this panel, because they're going to talk about apostasy, amongst other things. 